Hello, hello. We are live. Can't see any chat though. So I don't know if there's actually any chat there that I'm missing or whether YouTube is stuffing me up again. But let's wait for a few people to join. Still can't see you in the chat. Hello, Albert. You've confirmed to me that the chat is indeed working. That's a relief. Ah. I thought I'd put a message in earlier saying about you no know, technical difficulties or something like that, but Oh, five people. Five people are here. Hello, everyone. G'day, Jason. Nice chat we had earlier. All right, well, let's get things started. First and foremost, updates to the channel. Um, Videos, new videos. There's going to be one coming out on Sunday. Uh, yeah, it's going to be the Inlander to Mount Isa, um, plus a little bit of Townsville at the start. Uh, and yeah, I'll tell you the story about how I came very close to missing my long distance coach. So look forward to that. Uh, it's already, I've already uploaded it, and so it's on my channel, but it's on private, and it's scheduled for release at 9 a.m. on Sunday. So if you're in Queensland, 8 a.m., you get it an hour early. <laughs> well, no, not really, but yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, I've started work on part seven. So part six is coming tomorrow. Part seven, possibly in a week after that. We'll see. It's going to be a long one. G'day, TSE. Yeah, part seven, uh, I've got about an hour or so of source footage. And so far, I've edited about half an hour's worth. Uh, and so I mean, like, the video is already half an hour long and I've cut out maybe five, ten minutes. Um, I don't know, yeah, so exactly how long it's going to be, um, I don't know. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not talking about metro timetables. Um, I know what you mean, but uh, no, I'm talking about uh, the, the video that I'm working on. Um, yeah, I sort of, I'll talk a little bit about the video, part seven. You'll see it when it comes out in maybe two weeks' time, maybe a week's time. Who knows? We'll see. Depends how much time I get to edit. Um, but, yeah, I've got the first 15 minutes, which is stuff that's relatively not that interesting but worth including as part of the overall theme of the journey. Um but it's not really worth it as a video on its own. So that's why uh, I'm going to be combining that 15 minutes into an overall longer video. And yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So the topic of today is tips for improving your railway photography. Um, a lot of these things are going to be applicable to any sort of photography, be it railway or otherwise. Um, but 
Yeah. So the first tip is really just that, is that you should learn about photography in general. YouTube is a great place. I've learnt the majority of what I know today about photography from YouTube. Um, you just look it up, just search, like, you know, beginner photography guide, sort of something like that. Look through videos, there's, there's plenty of them out there. Um, and then just, you know, continue watching photography-related videos. Um, and if you, you know, they won't be specific to railways. Uh, often they'll be for something like portraiture or landscape or, you know, something like that. But a lot of the general tips you can sort of go, okay, I can see how I can apply that to railways. Like landscapes, for example, you know, you might be taking a photo of a train that uh, is in a landscape. So tips for general landscape photography could well suit you. Uh, g'day, my guy or whatever your name is. Uh, how do you not get caught by staff when taking photos or videos? That's a good question. The short answer is be respectful. Um, it depends. Like if there's a place that they've specifically said don't take photos here, like there's signs and everything, uh, then, um, then my tip for that is use your phone because, <laughs> you know, uh, they don't really – consider phone cameras to be real cameras, even though you can get photos on them, quite good photos. And in fact, I did a live stream previously on tips for taking photos on your phone. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. Maybe I just talked about it, talked about how I used to take photos on my phone by necessity. Anyway, uh, yeah, and if you, if there's no signs or anything, then the the best way is to go up to the staff on the platform uh, if they're around and say, hey, you know, I'm a train enthusiast, do you mind if I take a few photos? Um, and most of the time they'll say, yep, uh, that's fine. Uh, sometimes they won't like you using a tripod, so just be aware of that. Um, Often they can be fine with you just taking photos and videos in general, but, um, yeah, they, they just don't like you using a tripod. And, you know, just try to not get too many uh, recognisable faces in the photo, you know. Like if it's just – if it's a general crowd sort of shot, then, yeah, that's fine, but just try not to get any close-up photos of people, especially staff. Um, and then – if you do if you do all that and they say no then say okay no worries and walk away find a different spot um, if for some reason you choose not to ask the staff first um, which there are times when you know it's not really that practical um, then in that case just uh, don't get in anyone's in anyone's way. Uh, probably don't use a tripod. Uh, and if you, if staff do approach you, uh, just be respectful. That's amazing. If, if you're respectful, it will get you a long way. Uh, says it helps to take the lens cap off first. Yes, absolutely. I think we're. All, we're all guilty of that <laughs> at some stage. I know I still, even after, what, five or six years of serious photography, I still forget to take the lens cap off. You, know, you bring the camera up to your eye and you go, why is it black? Well, oh, because I haven't taken the lens cap off. That would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, back to the general tips. Um... Yeah, it's really learn about photography in general. Yeah, 
especially composition, because composition is applicable to all types of photography, be it railway or not. And just you don't even have to do anything. If you if you didn't do anything else, you didn't learn about the technical side of photography, um, anything else, you just learned about composition, you, you could most railway photographers could improve their photos tenfold easy. Uh, what if staff ask you to stop taking photos or videos of trains when you use phone as an aggressive way? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, if you, but if you mean like uh, if they tell you to stop taking photos when you're using your phone, um, even after you been told to not take photos. If you ask to not take photos, don't take photos. Just move on. But yeah, you'll find that staff are generally okay with photos as long as you ask. As long as you just explain what you're doing. And you be nuts. If, if you haven't asked and you just use your phone and then they tell you off anyway, then, yeah, same same as anything. You just say, oh, sorry, didn't know, I'll stop. And then you can move on. <clears throat> so, yeah, so I, I said improve your composition. The flip side to that is learn the technical aspects of photography. Learn, if you've got a DSLR, or even your phone, you can start using manual settings on most phones nowadays, but, um, yeah, it's less practical to do this on a phone, but certainly if you've got a DSLR or some sort of uh, dedicated camera, you can learn about the technical side of things in terms of the settings and you know all that just a brief i want to briefly touch on choice of camera i personally prefer a dslr or mirrorless camera pretty much the same thing in my eyes um i prefer that over something like a camcorder which i know a lot of uh, enthusiasts use the one benefit that camcorders have is smooth, far zooming. That's the one benefit they have. Everything else, you'll find better quality on a DSLR for the same price. Um, you'll find that uh, DSLRs are just more versatile. Uh, you can take good photos on them as well as videos. So yeah that's why i prefer to take to use a dslr and so when you're using a dslr you can um you can switch it to manual exposure mode and you can learn what aperture shutter and iso mean what they do how they affect your photo so those are the three settings that are going to control your exposure. And, uh, yeah, you, if you look at them, then you'll be able to, uh, you should be able to, once you figure out, okay, shutter speed, if I have a faster shutter speed, I'm going to freeze the action more. If I have a slower shutter speed, I'm going to blur the action more, but I let in more light, you know, that sort of thing. Any beginner photography guide will teach you that sort of thing, how to use manual exposure. Or, you know, if it doesn't, just search on YouTube, like, how to get out of order or something like that, how to use manual exposure mode. Uh, and there's plenty of, plenty of content on that. But, yeah, if you learn the technical side, then it will allow you to make 
more informed choices creatively because you don't always want to freeze the action, you know. Sometimes you want a little bit of blur, just a little bit, so that you can sort of get the idea of the movement. Um, I'll find a photo uh, that is a good example of this, and I haven't used to take this photo on my phone, but uh, you can use the same principles on your camera. Um, <clears throat> actually, I've come across a different photo, not the one I was thinking of, but illustrates the same point. So you see this photo, right? I've taken it with a relatively slow shutter speed so that the whole platform is blurred as we're carrying past, but uh, the carriages, which are obviously moving with me, are sharp. And so it gives you a feel, a feel, <clears throat> sorry, of you're on a moving train and, you know, it's rushing past the station at speed. Um, and so, yeah, you can use that to your advantage and, you know, that was... If I, if I freeze the action completely and I just uh, had a static station, you'd sort of be like, meh, it's a meh photo. But with the blurriness, the motion blur, now you're talking. Now that's a good photo. So learn your technical settings and it will allow you to make more informed choices creatively and you can come up with some fairly unique shots. Um, yeah, having fully charged batteries helps too, especially for long exposures at night. Yes, um, always make sure before your trip that, that your batteries are all fully charged and as soon as you get back from your trip, uh, immediately place your batteries onto charge <clears throat> and then make sure you actually bring them because... <laughs> I've been guilty a couple of times of uh, leaving my batteries on the charger at home. So it would have been good if I took them. Um, but yeah, that little things like that, like you know, having the battery will allow you to take photos in the first place. So <clears throat> it's pretty obvious, but everyone forgets at some stage. So you can you can do stuff to minimise it, like uh, whenever I take a battery out of my camera, I will leave the battery door open and I won't close it until I put a fully charged battery back in. <clears throat> so that way I know that if I go pick up my camera and I've forgotten that there's no battery in it, I'll see the open battery door and go, oh, I haven't got a battery in it. Go get one. Um, my other tip, my next tip is, <clears throat> oh, sorry, my voice is a bit croaky today. Um, my next tip is to mix it up. Do whatever everyone else isn't doing. So there, there are times to respect a photo line or that sort of thing, um, because, you know, Nobody likes it when somebody's just being a douchebag and just getting in everyone's shot. But at the same time, if by getting in someone's way very briefly, they're not going to miss anything and you're going to get a better shot, then that's when it's okay to do it. And I, um, I, took, a, I took a photo that... The photo, end, <clears throat> hmm, the photo ended up getting corrupt, unfortunately. Uh, but when I was in Oyen once, um, there was a photo line when the train had stopped uh, and everyone was getting shots of the front of the train. I was like, yeah, cool. I let everyone, you know, get, a, get their shots. And then I stepped in front, took my photo and got out of there. But in that split second uh, that I was in there, I got a, a lot of people yelling at me because um, I was getting in the way. 
the and in that case I'm just like okay I'm getting my shot I'm getting in there I'm getting out I'll leave you alone and you know nobody was really annoyed at me after the fact they just thought that I was gonna stay there for ages and just like, pull their shot but yeah something to consider so that's sort of what I mean in uh, you, that's one way of getting doing things differently to everyone else is you're getting an angle that everyone else isn't getting. <clears throat> um, you can you can go like instead of taking your standard front three quarter shot. And by the way, there's nothing wrong inherently wrong with the front three quarter shot. But why not get that and then get another shot like perhaps head on obviously the train <laughs> can't be moving for that but if you get a head-on shot or rear three quarters or down low up high you know just try and find a view that uh, other people aren't necessarily seeing and it doesn't have to you don't have to necessarily <clears throat> think oh, this is going to be so much better, but you're just trying it out and you can decide later on whether you want to post the photo or not. Just want to take a moment and say, g'day, uh, 7-11-6A fan. Uh, I know you came on a little while ago, but I was busy talking. <clears throat> the other thing with mixing it up is to mix it up in terms of... Uh, your zoom ranges. A lot of people just get a very generic view um, of everything. Uh, and that can be okay. You can get some good shots. But you'll find that you'll get a lot of unique shots if you try and mix things up with zooming. So, for example, you might want to zoom in really far. Um, or you might want to zoom out really far, you know. It can just give you different looks. Uh, try moving closer, moving further away. You could move further away and zoom in at the same time. You could move closer and zoom out at the same time. All these different things are going to get you different looks. And, yeah, it's just about um, trying to... Trying to just try a bunch of different things. That's always my aim when I'm photographing is I'm trying to get as many different photos as I can um, and then not all of them turn out. In fact, most of them don't. And that's part of the fun of photography is that, you know, uh, say eight or nine of them won't turn out but the ninth or tenth one will be awesome and you're going to be really glad that you tried the different things. Sometimes you can tell on the day that, oh, yeah, geez, this shot is really cool. Uh, other times you're just wrapped up in the moment and you're just like, yeah, cool, another photo, good, done, and then you get back into the computer and you're like, oh, that's, that's a really good photo. Um I, it was really, uh, when I bought my first wide angle lens, um, which for my old Canon was a 10 to 18, um, I didn't think that it would end up being my primary lens, uh, but it did end up being it because I liked the unique photos that I could get from it. And I was just getting all these photos that are very different from everyone else. Um, you know, wine angles are especially good for interiors. And that's another point, is don't just get photos of the locomotive and that's it. Get photos of the entirety of the outside of the train, carriages and all, uh, and get good photos on the inside of trains as well. If, if you're someone who likes traveling on the trains themselves, um, 
like me, then it's going to be good if you can take photos on the inside. Uh, and, you know, there, there's a lot of really interesting carriages. Uh, and especially if you, sh if you take some good photos of inside of some of the more special carriages and then you show them to friends and family who aren't necessarily rail fans, they're going to be they're going to be quite surprised a lot of the time in a good way. Uh, seeing, oh, geez, this carriage is really fancy, or oh wow, I didn't know there were any dining carriages left, you know, uh, stuff like that, and or you know you, you might show a photo of the inside of a standard old carriage and you show it to your grandma and she goes. Oh, I remember travelling on those when I was a kid, you know. Uh, Albert says, a photo should tell a story. Capturing the things around the train helps tell the story. Absolutely. Um, and I love capturing people in my photo. It's another thing. It's all, this is a recurring thing, you know. Mix it up. Get people in your photos. Sometimes you don't want people in your photos. Sometimes you do. And a lot of rail fans very strictly say no people in the photos. And it's like, it can just get a bit boring, you know? Especially if it's the inside, you know, showing uh, everyone in the lounge car, for example, you know, sitting around chatting. You know, that, that can be great. Let me find a good example photo of that. I'll speak. But so I've got this photo here, which is um, it's of a, the inside of a dining carriage, right, on uh, a heritage tour. And you can see, you know, there's the V-line conductor there. There's some random dude. And I don't know, it's hard to see, but there's a couple of people in the background sort of over there. You know, if imagine nobody was in that photo, it'd be an okay photo, but getting the people in it tells the story of, oh, it's a nice relaxing trip, it's a cool dining car, and people there, people chatting, you know, and that's where a wide angle lens can help you, it will help you capture a full view of the interior. But, you know, use Zoom, not necess don't necessarily use Zoom because you're not close enough. Sometimes, yeah, you're not close enough and you just can't really do much about that. But if you can move your feet, try moving your feet. Try moving your feet and zooming in or zooming out, you know, that sort of thing. Um... And, you know, uh, zooming provides different perspective. It, it, you, well, okay, that's not quite true. Zooming is like cropping the photo. It's, you're choosing to show more or less of the scene. But by moving your feet, uh, you're creating a different perspective. And if you combine the two, even if you've got the same sort of angle, the same, not angle, if you've got the same sort of stuff in the photo, but you're sort of moving out and zooming in at the same time or stepping in and zooming out at the same time, so you're doing two things that sort of counteract each other, then that can create a different perspective. And... You can, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll just all go towards trying to create a unique photo. Uh, the carriage photo is a classic Floyd perspective straight lines shot. Yes, and straight lines is another thing. Railways are full of straight lines, absolutely full of them. And 
Yes, yeah, absolutely right. I love taking advantage of straight lines. Straight lines are a great compositional tool to lead the eye to gain perspective. So, you know, obviously we've got the line between the roof and the walls, sort of, but on the carpet, everything's sort of leading your eyes into the photo. And that's an important thing is to always be looking around, looking for things like lines and stuff. Always, I'm always thinking about, whenever I've got my camera with me, I'm always thinking about the photo that I'm about to take. I'm always thinking like, oh, yeah, there's these lines here and I think I'm going to centre it uh, and there's these people here. I probably want to be positioned here and zoom out about this far, you know. It's, uh, yeah. And I, in my early days of photography, I, I used to hear people say all the time, you know, oh, I'm thinking about the photo and stuff. And I thought, yeah, that's great. But, like, I try to think about the photo, but I just can't. Like, I, don't, I just don't really know how you do that. Um, and it, it just came with experience. If you can't, if you're not imagining the photo, just try um, and then get more experience. And the more experience you have, the more you'll be like, oh, yes, I can see, I know in my head sort of what the photo is going to look like before I take it. And that's where the best photos come from a lot of the time is that you've already thought about it in your head and you already know the sort of, you're already, already envisioning the photo that you're about to take. Um, but, yeah, you haven't actually taken it yet and then the camera is just the capturing it, right? And <clears throat> on that note of getting experience and stuff, don't be afraid to take photos of everyday stuff. A lot of rail fans almost exclusively take photos of just the special uh, stuff, be that uh, you know, a special freight movement or a special passenger train or special anything, but they ignore the everyday because they're like, oh, well, that's boring. I see that every day. It's nothing special. Well, it's true that it's nothing special. It will be in 10, 20, 30 years' time. I bet you... If you take, if you look at some of the most popular photos that you see on the Facebook groups and uh, that sort of thing, a lot of them are sort of everyday photos that just, you know, 50 years ago or something like that. It's always the everyday stuff that is very popular. The special stuff is as well, of course, but don't forget the everyday stuff. And it will help you gain experience and you can get some nice photos of everyday stuff. I'll, I'll see if I can find a quick example of something that's everyday. I guess this is, this is a, sort of an example. You know, this is the Maryvale freight train. Um, and, yeah, it was... Fairly every day. It's a freight train through Melbourne on a daily basis, and yeah, it was just an everyday shot. But uh, you know, I got a different perspective of it, and it's taking photos of an everyday thing. And I thought it was a good photo. It's loaded now, so perhaps you can see it a little clearer. Hard for me to know. Um, Let's find something else that's sort of every day. Here's a nice photo. This is Box Hill Station in Melbourne, of course. Uh, but yeah, you were, it was a fairly typical everyday photo. And I took that one on my phone. 
your phone, even if you've got a good uh, DSLR or something like that, your phone is still a great camera to capture everyday stuff. And, okay, you might not be practising the technical side of things. Uh, you might not be practising zooming in or out so much. Uh, but you're practising composition, which is always something you can improve on. Um, yeah, just take, take photos of inside of carriages, inside of anything. Uh, as, yeah, Jason says, it's about capturing the moment in time. Uh, yeah. For that matter, take photos of, taking photos at stations rather than the trains themselves. Stations are, they're not moving, obviously. Uh, they're often, they're buildings, right? Um, so, you know, you're perhaps going to be venturing in more towards what would be considered classical architecture photography. But, uh, yeah, your sort of stations aren't your typical building because they've got a platform, number one. Um, and, you know, they often have, you'll sort of have two facades to the station. You'll have the platform side and then the road side. Um, and, yeah, it's all about it, just use the same techniques of mixing it up, looking for leading lines, that sort of thing. It's all help. Um, it's not going to load in time, but uh, actually, maybe if I turn my phone off, it might load quicker. It does. <laughs> so, this is a photo of Stony Point Station, right? Um, it's not your typical station shot because I found different perspective, but oops. There we go. Um, yeah, it's a different perspective. It's the end of the line, and I'm telling the story in the photo of, you can see, it's the end of the line. And, you know, it looks fairly peaceful. Um, I'm framing it up using the environment, right? So you've got the bushes on the right-hand side here. Uh, and then you've got the station itself on the left-hand side, it's everything centering around the train, and you've got a bit of the tree sort of hanging in and filling in the sky a bit. So, yeah. And you don't have to get the perfect shot straight out of camera either. Feel absolutely free to crop it um, once you get it onto the computer or something like that. Um, I crop a lot of my photos, not just, you know, obviously to create the four by five uh, aspect that I post on Instagram, but cropping in the traditional sense of like, you know, zooming in a little bit. Because, you know, you can often just miss, miss little things, you know. They might not quite be centered, right? So then you can use the crop to sort of just center it a little bit. Stations have things that change a lot over time too. Absolutely, like branding, information displays. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Photos of stations also have their own interest over time. Yes. And oftentimes you, uh, you're like, oh, I won't capture it today, but I'll capture it tomorrow. It's fine. It'll always be there. And then tomorrow you'll be like, oh, it's fine. It'll always be there. Uh, I'll capture it some other day. Um, and then you're always going to capture it some other day. And then before you know it, the thing, the very thing that you were trying to capture in the first place has disappeared. Uh, a very recent example in Melbourne is the Mikey machines. A lot of the uh, small stands, small Mikey stands, uh, in Melbourne stations have been upgraded to the version 2, which is a lot better. 
the monarchy scans a lot faster and everything like they should have had in the beginning. But, um, yeah, they, I've captured a few, I've captured lots of photos of the old mighty stands and I didn't know when they were going to be going away. But I'm glad now that a lot of them have gone that I've now captured that. Um, and I can look back on it in 10, 20 years' time, even in a year's time. You know, it's a good photo, it's a good photo, post it. doesn't matter how good it is. And uh, the Stony Point shot, Jason said, the tree adds a nice little touch. Thank you. Um, yeah, look at everything in the background as well of stations. You can capture their surroundings. Like in this photo of Denoli Station, uh, you can see the, the silos are in the background. And so you really get the idea in this photo that, oh, it's a small country town and, of course, there are silos in the background. Um, but you also get the inter interesting perspective of, you know, seeing that there's the track that's been added in to go around the back of the station. So, yeah. Um, what else? Yeah, cap capture stations, no matter how small they are. This is a photo of Rockbank Station. Um, it was back then a tiny little station that the majority of trains passed. Now it's a huge station and it's almost unrecognizable. So it's going to be cool to see that for uh, when I, when I, sorry, when I go to capture the new rock band station, uh, I'll post it with that one to show you the, the before and after something. G'day Nick, how's it going? Um, yeah, and I, I don't have this photo on my phone, but, um, I captured a photo of uh, Rock Bank Station with A66 rolling up to it, which for those of you who don't know, was um, uh, ultimately a 50s era, 1950s era locomotive that until I think last year, maybe even earlier this year, um, it was on regular passenger trains. Um, so yeah, that's another thing is that you can plan certain photos out like that. I knew that A66 was running on that line and I knew what service it was on. So I knew what time it was going to be rocking up to Rock Bank. Um, and so I was there ready to capture it. So don't be afraid to plan photos, um, but at the same time, don't be afraid to have unplanned photos. Often the best ones are the unplanned ones, you know? Um, go, go on the train, be on the train to capture photos of stations. That's another way that you can mix it up, right? You can get a photo out the window and you can either choose to like frame it with the window so that, you know, you can maybe have a photo of somebody looking out the window onto the station uh, or if it's an openable window, then you can sort of put yourself out the window a little bit and sort of get a shot of the train in the platform and, yeah, on the station. Uh, or if you're really lucky and you're on a platform like a balcony on the back of the train, then you might be able to capture a photo like that. Uh, that's Footscray Station at night and uh, I was on the back of a moving train. Uh, so, yeah.
Nick says he likes doing stations in the city. City stations are hard to do because they blend in so much, nothing really to contrast. Yes, you're absolutely right there. Um, but every station has the surroundings. Every station has surroundings, right? So you can always capture something. I mean, here's an example of uh, a city station that uh, I got a fairly unique photo of. That's loads. Here we go. So this is, I think, it's Middle Gorge Station. Uh, it is a relatively new station. I mean, when was this captured? August 2018. Um, but yeah, you can, you can, it's showing the, you know, it's just showing that it's, hey, look, it's a brand new station. And I've captured a bit of the roof and I've captured a train pulling in. So yeah, it's, it's all, all those sort of things all add to it. Uh, let me see if I can find another example of a station that really blends into its surroundings. <clears throat> How about this one? Ringwood Station. Again, you know, it's a, it's in the city, right? Uh, but I managed to capture that. Oh yeah, there's a few trees in the background. There's a few buses rocking up here, and you know, there's the station itself. There's the old signal box. You can see, like, oh, you know, this station perhaps used to be more remote than it is now. So. Yeah, this is a nice photo. <clears throat> this is uh, the staircase at Mernda Station. Again, you're mixing it up. Uh, you're getting different perspectives. You're just you're always looking around. There's lots of leading lines in this, you know. And I don't do many black and white photos because uh, there's generally a lot of colours to be seen in. No worries, but don't be afraid to do black and white when the colours aren't important to the photo and it's just all about the lines. Uh, so that's what you can sort of see in that photo is I could put a colour photo, I could make that a colour photo and it would just be like meh, meh. Don't really care about the colours. There's not, I mean, what, it's grey concrete, Grey stairs, you know, making it black and white just sort of adds that extra little bit of punch to it. Well, it says experimenting and breaking traditional photography rules sometimes generates quite nice photos, like having a train silhouetted by shooting into the sun behind the train. Yes, absolutely. Once you know the rules, break them to see. You know, um, see what it produces, and especially if you, um, well, I guess this is a tip on its own, is to capture raw photos. Uh, any DSLR uh, or that sort of thing will be able to capture raw photos. Most phones can do it these days. Uh, Google it for your camera or phone, and I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, in sick. Um, love staircases because they add a different perspective. Yes, absolutely. Black and white and night of trains are my best. Yeah, interesting. Hi, it's Sophie from the Dandenongs. Symmetry looks good, can be quite powerful. Yeah, g'day. And yeah, symmetry. Don't be afraid to use symmetry and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, if you ca if you're capturing into the sun, especially, but for any sort of any sort of railway photography, uh, capture raw photos because they will provide you with the most data. And then what you can do is you can get them onto the computer, and you can edit them, and you can bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights, sort of get everything to uh, be a bit more even. You don't want to 
eliminated completely, you still want to make out that, you know, that's a shadow, that's a highlight, but you just perhaps want to make it a bit more even. This is a photo um, of Sandringham Station uh, on a foggy morning. You know, it's a fairly regular photo, but, uh, yeah, you can see it's got some harsh, you've got very harsh lighting, um, but there's shadows there and the, the sun is beaming down. Uh, but the shadow really adds, it all adds up to go like, you can tell that it's early morning. You can tell, oh, yeah, it's early morning and, oh, look, all the people there, you know, it's the morning commuter run. It's telling a story. And the more practice you get, the more you'll be able to see these stories and just capture them. And, the, of course, the brilliancy of digital these days is that it costs you virtually nothing to take photos, to take a photo, right? Yes, of course, everything has a cost. You're going to be paying for the storage of all those photos in the long run. But compared to film, it's cheap. It's cheap, cheap, cheap. So don't hold back. Ta capture lots of photos. Doesn't matter how good you think they are or aren't. Just capture them. And then later on, when you're at the computer, you can go, I like this photo. That one's pretty crap. I can get rid of that one. You know? It's all about mixing it up. Um, yeah, go to city stations, go to country stations. Um, just the, the more you get out, just find different spots, find different stations to capture. Each station is going to be slightly unique in its own way. And, yeah, there are going to be some stations that look near identical. Uh, but maybe you can find something. And that can be the challenge is that you're trying to find something uh, that makes it unique and you can tell, oh, that's this station. It quite literally might be as simple as you're capturing a station sign in the photo. It could be that or it could be it's got some sort of different surroundings, right, that makes it slightly different. Uh, what else? Here's an example of uh, a photo I captured where you're technically not allowed to take photos of. This is Flagstaff Station in the Sea Loop in Melbourne. Uh, you can see a train coming in here and I've chosen a low shutter speed so that the train is a bit of motion, has a bit of motion blur to it, but the rest of the station is quite clear. And on just quickly on the note of low shutter speeds, um, <clears throat> don't be afraid to just keep trying with, to try to get a clear photo, you know, like to capture that one photo where the station was um, perfectly still and the train was motion blurred. I tried to capture a bunch of photos, um, yeah, until I arrived on that one. And I didn't know I'd arrived on that one until after the fact. But because, because of the low shutter speed, right, there's going to be, you're going to have slight accidental movement in some of the shots. But by capturing a few of them, then you guarantee yourself that you're going to have at least one that turns out. And, yeah, I've, I've used that quite a lot. Um, I've captured some really unique photos that other people just didn't dare try. <laughs> uh, I says Cross City Tunnel will be making subtle changes to existing city loop stations, like new openings for connecting walkways. It's good to photograph these changes. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that's part of the dilemma of the railway photographer, right, is that you're trying to be artistic, 
And at the same time, you're deliberately trying to capture history. You're, a, a lot of railway photographers are just in it for the history and they don't really care too much about the technical um, artistic aspects of the photo. Um, and that's fine if you're one of those people, but I personally like the idea that I can capture a photo that's both artistically and technically a good photo, but also historically a good photo, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's ultimately why I would encourage you to learn photography and try and improve your photography and that's the main thing really is just keep trying to improve i'm still trying to improve i see people who take artistic photos that are way better than mine and i'm always trying to learn from them like you know i saw a photo the other day of puffing billy that was like everyone has captured the same photo of puffing billy uh, going across the Menzies Creek Bridge. But this person found a unique angle and framed it with some bushes and captured it at the right time. And I thought, that's great. You know, I don't, if, if I was there, I don't think I would have thought about that. But you know what? Next time I'm in a similar situation, now I will think about it. So that's another thing is look at other people's work. And try and see how they, how their choices uh, led to their photo, and then how you can sort of apply a similar sort of experience uh, for when you want to uh, capture a similar situation. Um, let's see. Uh, to, in terms of getting different perspectives and that sort of thing, uh, you can look for things like if, if you're nimble enough, uh, you can climb up trees and that can often get you a good perspective. Or in a photo like this, uh, I found a nearby bridge. Um, and so, oh, so, so that's Mildura Station. Uh, and, yeah, I captured that from the bridge and, you know, it's looking down. You can see in that photo things like, oh, you know, you've got the red soil, but you've, it also looks fairly luscious. And, you know, that's Mildura. Uh, what else? Cap capture photos outside of stations as well. Don't be... Don't be afraid to be confined to that. And I'm, I know that's not a big problem with uh, railway, railway enthusiasts, you know. In fact, if anything, it's the opposite. They'll capture track side, but they won't capture station side. But, you know, here's just a, a really regular photo of, uh, I think that was near Rock Bank. Um, might be wrong. But yeah, it's the sunset of the tracks and it's hard to see, but there is actually a train in the photo there. <clears throat> yeah. Um, capture the special movements as well, you know? Uh, there's groups like Train Tracker on Facebook. Uh, you know, there's Train Tracker Victoria, Train Tracker insert your state uh, for Australia at least uh, but I'm sure equivalent things exist elsewhere in the world um, yeah there's there's always ways where you can find out from other people when the more special movements are happening and then you can go out and be prepared to capture those things <clears throat> and on that note uh, chasing trains it's a fairly popular thing to do uh, where, you know, you get in your car and you're trying to be always one step ahead of the train. 
um, to be able to capture a photo of it coming through or something like that. Um, I'm not a big train chaser myself, but I have done it occasionally. And it's fun. Um, if you're doing that, then I highly suggest you try and plan out beforehand where you're going to get your photo and look at things like uh, how long will it take you to get to your next spot? Will you have enough time? Are you going to beat the train? Because if you're in a city location, you know, chasing the train can often be quite hard because uh, the roads aren't very direct and you can't go very fast. But it's, it's still manageable. Uh, you just have to do a bit of planning. Um, level crossings make for interesting locations. Each one is a little different. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, capture all sorts of infrastructure, capture level crossing, capture stations, capture bridges, and capture tunnels. You know, okay, obviously don't go in a tunnel if it's an active railway line, but uh, even then, you know, I have been in active tunnels, uh, but just use your brain, be switched on, don't be in there while the train's going to come through. Um, or heh, I was actually in a tunnel one time when a train came through, but I knew it was coming through um, well, well, well before it came through and I was hidden from view. Uh, so, yeah, just uh, make sure that that's, that's another thing is just make, make sure you're not going to annoy anyone. Safety is obviously a big thing around railways. And while I don't always agree with the quote-unquote safety policy, it is something to pay attention to and don't ever put yourself in a situation where you are actually unsafe and don't try, not, try your best not to put yourself in a situation where the train driver has doubts about your safety. Right, so um, yeah, just always be aware of the train driving that sort of thing. Um, and for that matter, I got a, I got a message a little while ago about trespassing on farmers' property to get a shot uh, versus the railway corridor, trespassing in the railway corridor. And I said, you know, try not to take, try not to trespass on farmer's property because, you know, that is their active property and they're not going to be too happy if they see you there. But um, at the same time, if you're going to trespass into the railway corridor, be sensible about it, be safe about it, make sure that, you know, you're several metres away from the track so that when a train does pass by, there's going to be no doubt in the train driver's mind that there's any chance of uh, anything happening to you. No. Even, and so that includes, like, even if you're, like, uh, say, a metre away from the train tracks and you know that the train is going to be clear of you, don't be there when the train is coming through. Stand right back. Let the train come through. If it's a big freight train, once the locomotives get out of view, then you can move a bit closer. But again, be safe, be sensible, always use your brain. I know that should go without saying, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, taking photos inside city loop tunnels is not recommended. No, absolutely not. <laughs> um, and the story about me being in the tunnel was not actually the city loop. No. It was a different tunnel. No. It was another though. So that should tell you which tunnel it is, if, if you know. Uh, I agree with you in regards to taking photos. It's trying, with, in regards to trying to take photos with a unique perspective, 
it is always a great idea to either take photos up high or down low in your ground level. Yeah, it's all about mixing it up, but at the same time, don't totally ignore what everyone else is doing. It's still, you can, you can still take the same photo as everyone else, and if you capture it in raw, you can edit it to your liking uh, and, you know, put your unique look on it. Uh, like I've had people say to me that my photos always look quite warm and almost like at sunset, uh, even when it's not. And I sort of, I get what they mean, you know. Uh, is I have a certain look to my photos that I like, and you develop that yourself more than you try. Um, and I can do a, a I'll do a video another time on um, how I edit my photos and how you can improve your editing and that sort of thing. Um, Jason says, we only have one life, so we should always be safe and respectful of travelers. Yes. That's the ultimate message of safety. Is You're allowed to bend the safety rules a little bit sometimes, but... I'm never going to be putting myself into a situation where I'm actually dangerous, right? So I think I've got that point across. Am I still happy with the A7 Mark III? Hell yeah. It continues to impress me every time I take photos with it. It's incredible. Every time I go, oh, geez, this camera takes good photos. <laughs> Yeah, but at the same time, you know, don't get too hung up about the gear. The gear is great and the gear will enable you to capture certain photos that you perhaps couldn't have captured otherwise, but uh, simply getting a more expensive camera won't automatically make you a better photographer. Um, yeah. In, in fact, I'd, I'd almost recommend people start out on a cheap camera, even if they do have the money for a more expensive one, start out on a cheaper one and learn what you like and don't like specifically about it, and then that can uh, inform your purchase, your future purchasing decisions. Uh, and I did a live stream another time about how to pick your camera gear and that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, we're getting on. So, anyone's welcome to put any further questions or comments in and I'll show you this photo. This is probably my favourite, I'd say it's my favourite railway photo that I ever captured. Um, yeah, it, it just really uh, has an awesome aura to it. Uh, and uh, I was very thankful to the train manager who's in front of me who invited me down to the tracks. Uh, and, yeah, uh, I captured that photo. That is a, another photo on this phone, captured on this phone. So, uh yeah, just goes to show you. And yeah, take portrait photos, take landscape photos, be respectful to the staff. Asking staff and being respectful to staff will get you a long way. I can't tell you how many times are uh, asking there's something and um, just being respectful and, you know, that sort of thing. I can't tell you how many times that has gotten me places that other people thought I would never get to. I mean, the classic example is the, um, the shots from the last Queensland Viral episode where I was in the cab of the locomotive and I got into the signal box, you know. It was both times... It was 
simply a result of I was careful in the case of the single box, I asked and yeah. You a lot of the time when you ask, you'll get a no. People will say no. But it's the I don't care if I get ninety-nine no's, it's worth it for the one yes. It's not quite those proportions, but you get my point. Um, Matthew James says, I just got the A6600 and I'm really happy with it. It's a great travel camera with the 18 to 135mm lens. Yeah, A6600 is an awesome camera. Um, I was seriously considering it for my second camera. Uh, but um, I think I'm ultimately going to go with the A6300 simply on the basis of price. Um, but yeah. The A6600 is an awesome camera. There was so much atmosphere in the photo, pretty epic. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I really liked that photo. Um, same trip as the thumbnail, by the way. Uh, Swan Hill Overlander. Castle Lane to Swan Hill. And funnily enough, my batteries ran out at Swan Hill, so. But yeah. Cool photos, and I captured them in raw, so. It all helps to create nice colours and that sort of thing. Anyway, we're due to end, so hope everyone enjoyed, and I hope that uh, especially if you're just starting out in raw photography, or even if you uh, have been at it a few years like I have, I hope that you learn something. Even if you're not into photography, I hope you. Uh, managed to find some interest in uh, no. Anyway, thanks everyone and look forward to a video coming on Sunday. See ya. <laughs>